This bad boy is larger than this bad boy. Boy, it's amphibious. It's like a ship. This is not a truck. This is a ship, guys. Whoa. Half ship, half truck. That uh, Overloon. Overloon is a place in the Netherlands, not far from the German border. Before we enter the museum, I'm going to warn you about something. Uh, my knowledge of military vehicles is not as good as uh, that of cars, especially classic uh, models, guys. Uh, the, when it comes to classic model uh, military vehicles, I know mostly about the Chevrolet, the Willys Jeep, uh, I know Ford, Dodge, um, and when it comes to European military vehicles, I know Citroen, I know Mercedes, in fact Mercedes played quite a big role, uh, and then also Volkswagen, but depends which model, because most of the military vehicles by Volkswagen were based on the Beetle, uh, they look like dude buggy beach mobiles or something, um, mainly for military purposes, uh, and then also I know uh, Opel had a, a big role in the military. Hey guys, so this is uh, the first... Uh truck I see this was apparently okay so I don't know if this is a military vehicle or not but it was from the 1940s this is a Morris commercial so judging by the name Morris I'm assuming it's uh, British although the wheels remind me of something Opel Blitz did before it's very interesting it reminds me of the Opel Blitz but it's not an Opel Blitz it's a uh, Morris this is the rear view of the van guys well the truck the it was used by the bank in the 1940s very interesting and uh, this uh, sort of skirt was a common practice for protection I guess whoa this is a huge tank guys so here you go guys this is a side view of the tank it's American oh guys this is a German tank oh my goodness look at this it is colossal just like that American one I think it's actually larger than the American one this is a really interesting armored vehicle right here. It reminds me of something I've seen before. Um, so basically it's American, but it was used uh, heavily by the British forces. In fact, I don't know if it's just me, but it reminds me of the British armored 4x4 called Ferret. It, it, I, maybe I'm wrong, guys, but just the wheels, it really does remind me of it. Um, so it's quite interesting what I'm seeing right here, guys. Uh, and it was also used by the Commonwealth of Nations. So it was used by Britain and then it was used by uh, nations that were under the Commonwealth. So, so basically that were part of the British Empire. So as a rule of thumb, here's what I know. Uh, whenever you see the white star on the side of the vehicles, like this one, right? Whenever you see a white star, immediately it symbolizes the United States of America. So this is like the US military. So um, there's no description for this particular bad boy, but I know it's from the US military, thanks to the white stars. Uh, whereas for the British military, I'm not sure, guys. Uh, but yeah, as you can tell, this is uh, this bad boy is from America. Oh my God, it's huge. <gasps> It's huge. Oh wow. Look at this. Right, so basically this is a Kenworth 572. I always knew that uh, there were American truck brands like Peterbilt, Kenworth, and then I know Chevrolet and Ford also had a big role in this. Um, so yeah, it's, it's very interesting guys. Here, let me just walk away a little bit so that you guys get to see. Oh yes, this is what I'm talking about. Goodness guys, this bad boy is larger than this bad boy. I mean, look at this. Okay, this bad boy is called the Sterling. In fact, it's a truck manufacturer I have never heard of, guys. Uh, I know that one is an Oshkosh. It says Oshkosh at the front end. I know, I, I've heard of Oshkosh, but Sterling? I, I mean, I've heard of it from somewhere, but I did not know about them making trucks. But here it is, guys. Uh, this is... The Sterling. Now, I noticed there's a difference in color. This one is military cocky green. I think cocky is the right word. This one has this gray tone to it. I believe that the gray tone will... Okay, on the side of the door I see it's got the symbol of uh, naval air station. So, I'm assuming this was... Like the Navy, they always get this tone of color to symbolize that they're part of the Navy. Whereas this is the ground force, the land force. Um... I'm not sure. Please excuse me if I'm wrong, guys. Oh, yes. This is another Navy bad boy, guys. Uh, this one is an Oshkosh. Wow, look at the front. <laughs> wow. Look at look at. Oh, look at this, guys. Finally, a Ford. So this is a Ford 6x6, guys. Uh, looks very interesting. It's, uh, it's right here, the side. Wow. Okay, guys. It's armored tank. 
well, it's, it's, it's a tank, but it's not really like meant for off-roading or something. It's just... Alright guys, so judging by the steering wheel being on that side, I'm assuming this is a British truck. Now, I've heard of this truck and I've seen pictures of this truck many times before. Okay guys, apparently this is not a British manufacturer, although I was surprised because the steering wheel is on the other side. Uh, this is built by a Canadian manufacturer. We call this the front... the FWD... The FWD SUCOE guys. Looks very nice. Looks quite interesting. It, look, it reminds me of something British. Now I don't actually understand what does the FWD stand for because whenever I see FWD I think of front wheel drive but there's nothing really front wheel drive-ish about this truck. I mean this bad boy is a 4x4. This FWD SUCOE was used uh, by the Canadian military in Europe. Uh, basically during World War II. Uh, but the thing I would like to remark is most trucks of that era had headlights. This truck does not have headlights though from what I see. Though if you look at that side there's a hole over there. So I'm assuming that hole was intended for a headlight or something. Alright guys, this is another Canadian bad boy. Well, okay, they, it's a, according to the description it's Canadian but it's a Ford actually. It's quite interesting what I'm seeing right here guys very interesting and I, for some reason the steering wheel is on the other side I don't know what is it about the Canadians, but I believe it's part of the Commonwealth uh, thingy So I guess since Canada is since Canada was part of the Commonwealth uh, I believe that time they would have the steering wheel on the other side just like England the, I, I made the same mistake about the other truck right there I thought it was a British truck because the steering wheel is on the other side perhaps it is Canadian, but it was probably used by the British forces in Europe. I, I'm not sure. Please excuse me if I'm wrong about this. Um, but yes, this is the the truck. Another thing I've noticed about these two trucks is they both have slender wheels. Like, uh, yeah, they stuck to slender wheels and they look like they're meant for off-roading. <laughs> oh, yes. Now I can definitely confirm this bad boy is American. I mean, look at that proud star, but the, especially the front. Now, I don't know if this is a Chevrolet or a GMC, but I know it's one of the two. It has to be because they always have... Wait, 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 wait. Hold on a second, guys. Okay, guys, uh, there's no description or anything. I tried looking all over the truck for a bit of detail to give me a hint on what brand it is. Um, I can, the reason why I'm a bit scared to jump to a conclusion is because the front reminds me of something Dodge did with the WC model. So I'm thinking, I'm, I'm hesitating between a Dodge, Chevrolet or GMC guys. Like you see those glasses right in front of the headlights, those iron bars, those things. It's something Dodge also did, so I'm, I'm not sure who did this truck. Here you go again, proud Americans, here they are. So, this one is called the White 666, all right? So there was a truck manufacturer called White. Um, so it's a, it's a manufacturer I heard of at one point, but I never like thought of it, guys. Uh, this was a logistics truck and uh, used for moving troops or used for moving goods. And this is a Mac N06, guys. Wow. <gasps> This bad boy is colossal, oh my gosh. All right guys, over here is the Dodge WC51. Oh my gosh, it's here, it's right in front of me. All right guys, I have a very big confession to make to you all. Of all the 4x4s, this Dodge we see was always my favorite, the Dodge WC51. Oh my. Hang on a second, WC? Oh, okay. Um, well, at least in, during World War II, they didn't know what WC would really mean in the future. The particular reason why the Dodge WC was my favorite truck was just because of the design. Oh yes, my favorite truck. Rear of the Dodge WC, guys. Oh yes, the Dodge WC. The rear. As you can see, it's, uh, it was used for logistics purposes, but then also you could have been used for carrying troops. It, it was a versatile vehicle. It's like, imagine the Willys Jeep, but just larger by dimension and with more purposes to it, like more utility to it. All right, that, that's basically what this Dodge we see was. So yeah. Look at this bad boy. This is another Ford. Oh wow, look at that. Oh, he doesn't look very happy. Look, <laughs> got a frown. Uh, oh, hang on a second. Doesn't that remind you of the Ford Mustang? 
Uh, who knows, maybe that's where the Ford Mustang got its identity from. I mean, look at this big grill and then headlights like this that look angry. <laughs> But uh, I believe that sort of design was intended because during the rainy season or when it's very muddy outside, it was uh, the sort of, uh, they had to find a way to cover the headlights as much as possible to prevent the mud splashes from uh, heading towards it. Um, but one thing that's remarkable about this truck compared to other displays I've seen in the museum is that the engine looks as though it's a mid-engine, guys. I mean, if you look at it, the driver's seat in the cab is very much forward. I believe this would have been the earliest example of a mid-engine truck, guys. Especially small-sized, light utility vehicle. It's not like the big vehicles we saw earlier, like the Kenworth, the White, the Mac and everything. The White and the Mac and the Kenworth, they all had huge engines at the front, proud noses. But this nose looks a bit flatter like it looks like as though it's inwards guys huh who knows guys who knows oh here we get a better display guys all right so this is a gmc cckw 35 Ooh, let's look at the front you see this is what i'm talking about those those um grill that cover the headlights it's it seems like they uh wait hang on a second maybe i'm wrong about something guys because I see those grills also on the Dodge WC. Maybe those, uh, those metallic grills you see, those uh, grids, they appear to be perhaps the military specification. So maybe civilian versions don't come with this, but military versions are required this for protection reasons. Okay, there's something new I'm learning, guys, because I've noticed a reoccurring thing about uh, American trucks and 4x4s is that they have an obsession for this grill right here. I initially thought it was by brands, but now I'm starting to realize it's actually a US military. Oh my god, they're here, they're here. The Dodge WC, the Dodge WC. Oh yes, there they are. Military truck is a Mac, Mac NR, guys. Wow, Mac NR, the wheels are huge. Now, this design of wheel is very interesting. It's something I've seen a lot with uh, heavy, uh, heavy duty trucks. So I believe this is, I'm not sure. Maybe it's a heavy duty truck thing because I know Mercedes and Mann, they also had the, these sort of wheels for their heavy duty trucks. And, and when I say heavy duty, I mean super heavy duty, super duty. I, I don't know guys, but you know what I'm saying. You know, it's, um, it, I've seen these designs of wheels and I just always try to understand what is the significance of it uh, exactly. Um, but yeah, this is very interesting what I'm seeing right here. And I can see the tires. The tires look off-road from a side, but if you look at them carefully, they look more road-oriented. All right, this bad boy is called the Brockway B666. Oh, yes, look at this. Nice. And this uh, was a bridge uh, vehicle. All right, guys, check this out. This is a GMC. Now, I've, no I've always known that GMC and Chevrolet, they always had something in common. Uh, but the thing to remark is that, uh, well, Actually, what is there to remark exactly? Because, because they look so identical. Like for a second, I was confusing this with a Chevrolet. Um, but this one has a unique wheel to it. This one has a, these sort of wheels which I've seen on the Canadian trucks earlier. So it's a very interesting. Uh, I believe this one was for off-roading on the beach, perhaps, or going off-roading for sure. Yep, definitely looks like it. Right, now this over here is a tank carrier and uh, I did a lot of research about it, guys. I remember when I first saw it, it was in a French magazine, uh, a French magazine discussing about military vehicles, and I couldn't, I, I couldn't stop researching about this truck, and it's finally here, right next to me, guys. I introduce you all to the Pacific Car and Foundry, the 12-ton 6x6 G160, the Tractor M26. That's right. It's right here, guys. Actually, to be honest, I didn't know if I said the name properly, guys, but I, I just read whatever I saw in the description. Uh, yeah, this is the, the bad boy of the 1940s. Yep, that's the front of it, guys. Looks very interesting. Now, the particular reason why this truck really interested me was because this was actually the only truck I saw that actually had the earliest concept of uh, having the driver's seat above the front wheels so as you can see it has this shape whereas other trucks in this museum have this format so the format of having the engine in front of the driver's cabin uh, 
In fact, I, I don't know where the engine is located. I'm trying to look, guys. Trying to have a look. Perhaps it's buried inside. I know some basic things about this truck, guys. Uh, there's some things I know about this. And if you see the chains right here, you can tell that um, the way it's powered is that the engine gives the power to an axle right here. And this axle distributes power to this, to the chains individually. So it means that the wheels don't have an independent traction. They both uh, work equally. Um, hmm. I, maybe I'm wrong, guys. Please excuse me. Maybe I'm wrong. Guys, I don't know what is it about American trucks, but there's just so many brands I have never heard of. Just now I saw a truck called Diamond. Diamond something. And now this bad boy right next to me is called Autocar. Uh, Autocar U7144 T. Oh my goodness. I mean, they have like really detailed names right there. Like, like look at this bad boy. It's great, but then at the same time, like, what happened after World War II? Like, did they all go bankrupt? Or did they all merge with another company? Is the Lark LX, guys. <gasps> the big bad boy. It's amphibious. It's like a ship. This is not a truck. This is a ship, guys. Whoa. Half ship, half truck. Okay, I'm joking around, but let me just tell something. Uh, this is basically an amphibious vehicle uh, built by... I'm not sure who is built by and, and I'm not really sure who powers the engine, but I recall something about it, it being General Motors or something. I may be wrong. Uh, first of all, I just want to tell you all something about Firestone, an American tire manufacturer. Uh, in fact, I heard about them only because of Ford. Apparently, Firestone and Ford got into a controversy or something and uh, yeah. But hey, Firestone made the wheels for this big bad boy right here. Uh, this was, um, from what I've researched, this was used only in the Vietnam War. It wasn't really used uh, in Europe. In fact, speaking of Europe, this is the only example here in Europe. This is in the Netherlands. So it's a very interesting display right here. And, and the tires are quite interesting because they remind me of something I've seen on the... Like, first of all, the overall figure reminds me of the Arctic Cruiser, the Arctic Snow Cruiser. So it's that's already one thing interesting. Looks like the tires have been in action, guys, because if you look at the markings right here, it implies that this uh, truck has seen service. I'm just trying to understand where exactly was it. Because I did some research about these uh, uh, examples. Apparently, I was told that there were 80 examples of these. Uh, most of that have been demolished. Um, and all I know is that they were in service in, during the Vietnam War. But as for the rest, I'm trying to understand what it is. But I can definitely confirm this is not a World War II vehicle. Okay, guys, believe it or not, this is what lies behind this bad boy. It's, uh, you see, it, this is the fan for the, when it's in water. Like, this is proof that this thing is amphibious. Sorry if my terms are very bad. It's just, I'm not used to seeing this big bad boy right next to me. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. It's huge. It's a ship. Half ship, half truck. Let's, we can actually see what's inside, guys. All right, let's just climb. Okay, um, all right. Uh, thank goodness I'm no engineer because I have actually no idea what's happening right here, but I believe this is supposed to be the engine that powers this bad boy. Um, it's just, this is the first time I see an engine this long that sits on one side of the vehicle. Or maybe this is a common practice amongst ships, I'm not sure. Uh, because usually trucks have an engine on one side of the vehicle in the middle. But this bad boy has it on this side. So I wonder, perhaps the rear is probably for the fans and for the cooling system. Uh, and I believe the weight would be evened out because of the weight uh, being put on by the vehicles, the tank and the truck. Right, well guys, look at this. This is a 6x6, 4x4. This is um, a Dodge WC again, the four by uh, the six by six version, guys. Very very nice. Look at this. They they were ahead of everyone. Like did I don't think the Europeans even came up with this. Oh, this is interesting. This is a Duff. Uh, this is a Dutch truck, by the way. Wow, it's a, but this one was assigned for the UN. Very interesting for peacekeeping missions. All right, this is also another uh, Pacific uh, car and foundry truck, the 12 ton 6x6 and uh, uh, tractor M26, blah, blah, blah. I'm, I'm sorry, guys. It's just this thing has a huge name that I, I, I kind of uh, lost track. Of, but this is a tank carrier again. This was the exact same tank carrier we saw, but this is a different version because the one we saw earlier had multiple doors. It had one door here, one door here, and the last one there. 
but this appears to be a convertible version so it means you can strip off the roof if you no way guys no way this is an opel blitz opel blitz what are you doing here with the americans <laughs> no okay okay sorry jokes aside guys but this is what i was talking about the wheel earlier we saw that morris truck that morris bank uh, truck uh, it had the similar wheels guys and uh, i know opel blitz always had this sort of wheel they even had it on their other model uh very interesting very interesting and this is the Opel symbol, which they still stick to today, guys. It's written Opel Blitz at the front. It's got this uh, proud German look to it. I noticed Mercedes and Opel, they had this thing for their trucks. They always had like simple fronts, but that had really bold uh, styling to them, like something you just don't want to mess with. Mercedes in particular grew from this. Mercedes had like the most intimidating trucks, um, whereas Opel, Opel Blitz earned a reputation for being very practical. Like they were just many of them built and they were just practical to move with. Guys, we cannot dismiss this bad boy. This bad boy is called the GMC Duck. Well, GMC D-U-K-W-353. Very interesting. In fact, uh, there are models like this that still exist today as tourist vehicles. They take you to the sea and everything. Very interesting, guys. Very interesting. So it's uh, very interesting what I'm seeing right here. Uh, it was intended for World War II. Um, I, I remember these uh, had a, well, from what I remember reading, these played a very big role in the European theater, in the, at the Atlantic theater. So when uh, the US forces arrived at Normandy, they used this particularly. I don't know about the Pacific theater. I'm not really certain. So when I'm talking about Pacific theater, I'm talking about the time after Pearl Harbor. So yes, it's... Uh, over here is the Jeep section, guys. As you can tell, this is the amphibious version of the Willys Jeep. Over here, you have the 6x6 version of the Willys Jeep. Yep, that's right. You see that, guys? Wait a second, hold on. I apologize, this is not a Willys Jeep. This is a Ford GPA. Ford, what are you doing with Willys Jeep's tires and wheels? <sighs> Seriously. What on earth? This is a Crossley. Guys, now the topic of the Willys Jeep is very interesting for the automotive industry because are you all, I'm going to ask you all a question. Are you all aware of the Toyota Land Cruiser, the Nissan Patrol, and all the Japanese 4x4s like the Nissan Navara? I drive a Nissan Navara and when I see these Willys Jeep, I think of something interesting, guys. Long time ago, around World War II, when it was coming to an end, uh, I don't know how far the story is true. But it started with Japanese soldier discovering an abandoned Willys Jeep on the island of the Philippines. Uh, basically, they brought the Willys Jeep back to Japan for inspection because they never saw such a vehicle before. A light utility 4x4, which they thought might be useful for a warfare where they need something maneuverable, something that just goes around something that gets soldiers around guys not necessarily all the time with the massive trucks sometimes they needed a small vehicle like this for logistics purposes for transportation of troops and so therefore that was the start of the land cruiser the first ever toyota land cruiser which was used in warfare um, and if you look at early japanese 4x4s they all have uh, so much in common with the willys jeep all right, guys, so my visit to the museum was very interesting, guys. Uh, one of the most interesting museums I've ever been to, especially when it comes to uh, cars. If you think about it, the 1940s was kind of like the expansion of the automotive industry. It was like a, a, a moment of big inspiration for new cars to be brought into the automotive industry. Like the birth of 4x4s, basically. The expansion for 4x4s, especially to civilians. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and stay tuned for more videos that are on the run, everyone. And don't forget to check the links in the description for my car reviews and my travel videos. Bye!